Okay, because so many people asked about the rabbits with tentacles, that's a jackalope. No, I am not kidding, that is actually a jackalope. You see, rabbits get papilloma just like us, it's the same thing that causes warts in humans, except some strains of it can do some pretty weird stuff. Those are just abnormal cell growths caused by papilloma. It's pretty common in rabbits, and authorities do say to stay away from these rabbits and not handle them. Ultimately, these growths can prevent them from eating, and while humans can't get it, other domestic rabbits can, and it's more severe in domestic rabbits. So just better not to handle them, although they do not pose any particular danger to us. But why do I call it a jackalope? Well, that's where the myth of the jackalope came from. Early in American history, people used to see these little rabbits with what they thought were horns, and thus the myth was born. But no, they're actually just sick rabbits. While we're at it, unicorns are real. This is actually a patent that I managed to find on the surgery that could produce a unicorn. You see, animals with horns, you can actually take the horn bulb when they're embryos and remove it and put it somewhere else, and people have done it. And that is an example of a produced unicorn. That is a cow. It is easier to do with an animal that already has horns, and these kinds of procedures are really not done because scientific integrity and ethics has gotten better over time. Yes, you could take the horn from something like a cow embryo and put that bulb into the embryo of a horse and it would grow up and have a horn. However, it would need to take immunosuppressants over the course of his life, so not really ethical. It could also just be an amino insufficient line, which are used for mice if you are doing transplant surgeries with other critters. There is a decent chance that it would just be okay with it because your dimus is the thing that tells you what is self while you're developing, so if it's done early enough, you might be able to get away with it. Kind of like how people can absorb their fraternal twin and just be okay with it, although hypothetically it does increase the risk of rejection and autoimmune conditions when your fraternal twin is you. Now this does happen just naturally, just from birth defects in animals. So that's a cow named Hercules and he was just born with this horn. That is a unicorn. You might ask, does this occur in other animals? Yep, there have been goat unicorns too. And of course, rhinos are the real unicorns. Now, one might ask why we see these kinds of deformities more often in domestic animals than wild animals. The truth is that there's just more domestic animals than wild animals, and that might shock you. Only 6% of mammal biomass on Earth is wild mammals. The rest of it is just humans and livestock. In fact, roughly 34 to 36% of all mammal biomass on Earth is just people, and the remainder is just, you know, livestock. So like 60% of all mammal biomass on Earth is livestock. So we're just more likely to see these guys, and we're also paying more attention to animals born in domestic situations than we do to wildlife. Now some people might point out that, wow, only 6% of mammal biomass is wild mammals, but that's not total number. I mean, mice are pretty small when they're running around. Sure, but biomass is still a pretty decent number when we're talking about large scale. Also, if that were the biggest issue, there should not be animals this large on Earth, and so many of them. I have read that methane produced by cows is a pretty significant problem, which is just amazing to think that methane could do that much. But I've also read that penguin poop and the gases produced by it are actually important for cloud formation, so animals actually do have a pretty big influence on the environment. That and forests create their own weather patterns. Do you guys want to learn about this, or do we just want to look at cow? <laughs>